Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate an additional feature within the Smart Tree client which is the ability to export data for external solvers. So previous videos you would have seen on this uh, Smart Tree YouTube channel have discussed um, how we can run models internal to the software, for example micromechanics, laminate mechanics, cylinder design and others. Um, but there is also the ability to autocode or generate code that you may want to use in a third-party program such as Abacus. So this tutorial will walk you through that process. So one thing that um, I do want to highlight here is this auto-coding process also leverages the smart tag backbone. What I mean by that is that in this um, slide right here it shows you that if I want to build a model, whether I'm running a model internally or if I'm auto-coding, that model requires data and that data can be spread out among different areas. For example, we can have materials with data. These materials have properties. These properties have units. So the back end of the Smart Tree client manages all this for you to make life easy so you can just fire up a model and run a model or in this particular tutorial um, access model data and export it to, in this case, a Fortran uh, subroutine that we might use in Abacus. So just keep that in mind um, when it when it when you are invoking these models, you're kind of doing a lot of this work in the background here to to access your data. So with that being said, let's just pull in a model that I will auto code and export. So I'm going to run the uh, software first, and you can see here when you fire up the software, it's going through and scanning all of my uh, smart tags, and it auto loads the default model. In this case, this is the model that we're interested in and it is available as an example under the uh, process models here under autoclave models there's a couple of models in here and the one I pulled in is this one right here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to invoke this model and how, what I, how I invoke it is I can simply go to the model tab and select that particular model on the drop down list and these are based on model templates and I do have another video to describe how templates work and how you can invoke models but all the examples have these included, so you can just pretty much invoke this as soon as you uh, access this uh, data from our GitLab site. So, the one I'm going to invoke here is this Cure Kinetic Sum model with pressure induced squeeze flow. And when I invoke that model, what it does is it looks at my model templates, in this case, this Cure template down here. And what it does is it compares this tree, which is a, a schema or template, to the tree that I'm activating. So, once it does that, it then finds what's in there that's here and highlights the, uh, highlights the items. In this case, this model has inputs, as you'd expect. It also has units. Those units are invoked using the, um, the units uh, smart tag. And uh, in this particular model, there's no outputs. So I'm not auto-solving or running a model internally here. I'm just basically grabbing these values, and I'm going to export these values to an external code, in this case, a Fortran code. So to invoke the export capability, you simply hit the autocode button. It opens up a window. The window, in this case, uh, you can then select, what am I going to do? I'm going to create an Abacus subroutine. And in this particular model, I have a number of submodels. And the first submodel is a cure kinetics viscosity model with glass transition temperature predictions. And the second submodel looks at diffusion and squeeze flow. So what what the software does is it looks through this tree and says, I have found a number of submodels. And let me just find show those to you again. Here's a submodel right here, submodel right here, and here's a second submodel. So by invoking the autocode, it actually looks through all of this first submodel and second submodel, and you can pick what you'd like to export. So in this instance, these submodels are head file. The head file routine is used to um, it's used in partnership with the Abacus subroutine. Um, environment to be able to predict heat generation and you can also put um, other um, equations in there to, to, to solve for in this case um, cure kinetics and TG alpha and viscosity so those are all tied to temperature and degree of cure and these are the values you would need to, to basically uh, solve for that problem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this head file subroutine I'm going to install it and in, uh, export this on the desktop and it exports this as a subroutine so if I click on export I can then pick that file and save it. Um, I can also do that for the second one. The second um, routine is actually a user subroutine. It requires a lot of the same inputs, but there are some additional parameters in there, and you can export those as well as a UMAT. So now I'm basically done. 
So what I've done here is I've basically used this software to manage the data, export the data, and autocode the data. So if I want to invoke these values in an abacus routine, that's pretty straightforward. Um, so here I have a pre-built SPAR model. And um, what, I'm, what the, the steps required to run that are as follows. So if I go into um, the uh, input deck, there is basically just a couple of steps here to be able to pull and run that abacus subroutine. The first is you need to go into your material and you need to uh, activate a couple of material uh, submodel attributes here. One of which is heat generation, because that invokes the Hethval routine, the routine we just generated. The other is to be able to uh, um, define the, um, the uh, solution dependent variables. In this subroutine that we generated here, there are 10 solution variables, so we just need to make sure that the, this number here is 10. And that's really all you have to do in, this, uh, in the material window. The next step is, and, and the model that's built here is, is built, it's a, it, you know, the, the subroutine itself can be used for a wide variety of different models, whether they're 2D or 3D. It is model agnostic, essentially. Um, the second uh, step you need to do to invoke the subroutine is once you create your job to run the problem, under the general tab, you will need to activate that particular um, subroutine. So that particular subroutine is under C, uh, users, uh, myself, and it's on my desktop. So I'll just pull that up, desktop. And so you just pick the routine that you're interested in running. And in this case, it's the HETVAL uh, routine right now. So I'm just going to find that. And here it is. And that's basically it. So you can run the model. You've got the information. You, you're, you're invoking the material attributes you need to run the subroutine. And you just um, pointed it to that subroutine. So once you run this model, you can then visualize the results quite easily. And here are these results. And here are the state variables that were coded with the autocode. And these state variables range from the, um, in this instance, the um, uh, degree of cure. You can plot the degree of cure in this particular model. You can also plot heat generation terms as well. Um, you can also plot the viscosity. So we can just plot those. So this is your degree of cure. We can um, animate that in here. Um, we can also plot, so you can see here the model that the parts undergoing cure. We can plot temperature. That's a, that's a built-in variable. NT11 is a nodal temperature. So here's the temperatures for an autoclave cycle. And you can see here there's, there's either um, cold spots or hot spots, depending on whether there's heat generation going on, and also the, uh, the cooling between the part and, and its surroundings. Uh, we can also plot, as I mentioned, um, the uh, viscosity, that's state variable 5 in this instance. So we can track how the material um, goes through curing and solidification. We can also track um, the heat flux, which is state variable 7, I believe. So this is actually then tracking what, uh, what type of um, uh, heat generation is, is, occurs based on the cure uh, in the model. So, so that basically shows you how you can um, autocode in the Smart Tree platform. Uh, which is shown here, auto-coding this data, generating subroutines, and invoking those subroutines uh, within Abacus. Thank you.